in Foothill Ranch, California, here at HPI Racing's global headquarters. They make wonderful RC cars, they make die-cast cars, and we're about to go inside to see what you can get for a little money, but represent a big model. We're currently in HPI's photo shoot area. As you can see, we have a lineup of Porsches, from the RSRs, GT3 RSs, turbos. Um, this is only a small sampling of the Porsche vehicles that they carry. Now you can get a full car, like this RSR here, or you can buy the bodies, and you can interchange these bodies on the chassis below. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how they get from the large scale version down to this 110 scale uh, model. So let's go take a look. All right, we're here with Scott Diocampo in HPI's modeling room. So you saw the beautiful cars that were lined up on the table upstairs. And they originally started as this piece of Lexan, which is pretty amazing to be able to get the look of that one to one 911 down to one, 110 scale model. And we were talking earlier, it's not simply reducing the numbers so that you can get a 110 scale. So tell me a little bit, Scott, how you get this piece to look like a 911. Okay, well basically first we um, scale down the original car to uh, a 10 scale uh, drawing. And then from there, kind of superimpose it on a chassis to see what it would, would look like. And then from there we have to tweak it to actually fit our chassis lengthwise and widthwise. So there's a little bit of uh, taking uh, the original car and massaging it to fit our chassis, keeping all the characteristics uh, so that it looks exactly like a 911 GT3 even though it's a little bit morphed. A little bit morphed, but to most people that look it, at the RC car, they're just amazed that it looks so much like the real one that they don't even notice the little tweaks. That yeah, little little uh, tweaks here and there just to, like I said, to make it fit right and look right so uh, you guys can't tell the difference. And what amazed me is I thought, I know a lot of things with this car is done through the computer's design and such, mm -hmm. but what intrigued me and amazed me was that you do this by hand. Yeah, all, all by hand. So uh, basically uh, like gridding, using our uh, height gauges and, and mapping and and stuff like that so um, it's you know doing one side first and then getting that look you know just right getting it approved and then just copying it over um, for the body and then the separate pieces are basically made from the inside so that we can get like a uh, like almost a female mold out of it so and what's important what you said is to get the car approved because I know there are other manufacturers that make quote unquote Porsche bodies but yes. you guys are licensed to do this and you actually have to get Porsche to sign off on the models that you've made. Yes, yes, yes. So they're all licensed. So um, even with our tweaking to make it look right on our chassis, it still has to be approved. And that's one of the cool things is for me to take basically like a liquid Bondo and turn it into something. And then somebody that actually designed it to say that it looks good enough for them to, to pass it, you know, and just by looking at pictures without really having the real car uh, is, is uh, very cool for me to have somebody say that I did their, their product justice, you know? It really is amazing. Again, taking a flat piece, piece of Lexan and, and, and putting it over a tool and having it vacuumed down, so to speak. Vacuum to formed, yes. Vacuum formed to mold up against the creases, the curves, the, all the little details of the 911 to bring you the cars that we were looking at upstairs. It really is amazing. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, now that you've seen how they make the bodies, let's go underneath the hood as they say. So you remove these body clips and here's what you find underneath. Now this is a ready to run kit, meaning it comes pre-assembled, charge up the batteries and within an hour or so uh, after the batteries are charged you can go ahead and run it. But it's not, you know, when you say ready to run, back in the day when you bought a, a RC car that was already built, they were probably subpar, not really competition ready, but as you can see here, this chassis has a lot of trick uh, items on it. You can tune your suspension parts, you can adjust your camber, you can adjust, uh, I mean just pretty much every little part on this car can be changed uh, to suit either your track or your street uh, to make sure that you have the competitive edge against your competitors. Um, you can do different tire compounds. These cars have come so far in technology uh, since you know the 90s. Um, you find electronic uh, controllers, receivers that are now waterproof so you can run them outside without worrying that you're gonna fry a ESC. Batteries, 
Uh, I'm not sure which battery it comes with, but the batteries that you can get can be upgraded. So much like a real cup car, if you want to spend more money on a bigger battery, stronger battery, it can go faster. This car out of the box probably does about 22 miles an hour. You can upgrade the batteries, you can upgrade the motors, and it'll run as much as 100 miles an hour out here. So these cars are pretty darn cool. Let me show you the GT3 version of this chassis. This one here, and again, much like a real cup car, use of carbon fiber, aluminum parts, slicks that are really sticky, really cool stuff. And then we've been talking about electric cars. They also do nitro cars, which was this one here. And I'm sure much like the electric cars, you can buy tuned pipes, headers, chassis parts to get your car going, you know, at insane speeds, but a lot of fun. So if you don't have two and a half million to buy the real cup car, you can buy the 110 scale and have just as much fun.